Welcome to the League of Women Voters Home Speech Commissioner Candidate Forum. First, uh, before we start the program, I would encourage all of you to use the League of Women Voters Voters Guides. Uh, you can access them through vote411.org where it will you'll put in your address and it'll replicate your ballot exactly. Um, or you can go to our webpage, LWV Manatee, Dot org under election kit and then elections and there's a series of voters guides there's also access to videos of candidate forms and this will be there as well we also have printed uh, voters guides that uh, are in uh, as of tomorrow will be in libraries uh, senior centers government buildings and the supervisor of elections there we go <laughs> We are pleased to have can the candidates for the Holmes Beach Commissioner with us today. Jane Christensen, Richard Hurst, Pat Morton, and Kim Rash. Each candidate will have one minute to answer questions. Carolyn Sheets, our Vice President and Voter Services Chair, will hold up this sign. Carolyn. <laughs> Yeah, that way. <laughs> uh, to, uh, when your time is complete, I think you were going to do it at, uh, at at one minute and 20 seconds. And no, then, we're doing one minute. Oh, that's right. She yeah, I set it at 50 seconds for me to put it up and then give them yeah. time. Yeah, finish your sentence and we'll move on to the next question or the next candidate. Uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted. To the League of Women site. You can refer to it, you can show it in its entirety, but it is the property of the League of Women Voters and cannot be used without the League's permission. Uh, we have a significant number of submitted questions, but we will be taking questions from chat uh, as well. Carolyn will be monitoring chat and will present some of these questions. Uh, so shall we get started? Uh, candidate Christensen, uh, tell us about your background and why you are on. Well, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to be here tonight with you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for Manatee County for putting on this forum for us. I really appreciate the opportunity. So I'm new to being an elected official and running for uh, office. Um, the reason and my background is I've been an island resident for 13 years and I actually came here in 1989 with my parents when they bought the home I'm in right now uh, and we still live in today, um, 31 years. Um, I've raised my family here and I care about our community. That's the number one reason that I'm running for City Commission of Home Speech is because I care about our community. Um, my background is I have a business background. I work for the number four largest pharmaceutical back, uh, manufacturer, and I've been with them for 24 years, and I can transfer my business acumen to help our city um, run the city as a commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. And Commissioner, I mean, not Commissioner, uh, Candidate Hurst. Yes. Uh, would, uh, could you uh, tell us about your background and why you're running? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So my, my background, I've lived in Holmes Beach for uh, 13, uh, since 2013. Uh, I do have three uh, children, two grown college graduates and a eighth grader. Uh, my background from a career standpoint is very entrepreneurial. I, in my uh, in my 20s, I developed a software product that uh, solve the needs of one of the most challenging industries out there, and it's still the premier product in the industry. Uh, also was an entrepreneur in the automotive industry, uh, where our company was a single source supplier for Ford and Chrysler, which is also very difficult to do. Uh, so I do think that uh, I've uh, taken on many challenges. I also own the uh, Freckled Thin Irish Pub, a uh, managing partner. Uh, never been in the restaurant industry. Most people who uh, get in the restaurant industry fail after the first year. 
uh, we're two years and going strong. So I, I'm not afraid of a challenge. I think uh, Holmes Beach has very complex, challenging issues. Okay. Uh, I think uh, they need some out of the box ideas, and I, I, I think they're going to help a lot. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Moore, I mean, she's got to stop doing that. Candidate Morton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, I've been a resident of Holmes Beach for 22 years. Uh, we moved here from up in Ohio. I've uh, been always in management ever since I've been here. I've been city commissioner for 17 years, uh, making progress with each one of our commissioners we come in here to work together. Uh, I extremely enjoy uh, uh, producing things in our meetings so we can take a move thing process through. Uh, we've put, put a lot of ordinances through since I've been on here in the last 17 years, and I, it's been a pleasure to be serving our citizens of Holmes Beach. That's it. Okay, and candidate Rash. I, I've uh, been an entrepreneur myself. I had a, had a business for 40 plus years. I've been very successful. Uh, we bought here on Holmes Beach in 2001. Uh, I've been attending a lot of the meetings for the last 10, 11 years being interested in being a voice for the uh, residents here on Holmes Boulevard with all the new uh, uh, vacation rentals that were, were built. So uh, I have for the last two years been a voice for the, uh, uh, the residents and even the businesses, the business, a few businesses have reached out to me for help and I've helped them. And uh, I was kind of undecided whether to run or not but I had so many people call me and say, Kim, you need to run. You're the common sense on, on the uh, commission and we need to keep you. So that's why I'm running to uh, continue being a voice for the residents and the business. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, new question. Candidate Hurst, how would you balance the interests of the residents versus the businesses versus the tourists? Um, well, for one, I would uh, not think that I have the answers. So what I would do is I would bring all the, you know, many of the stakeholders together and come up with uh, some good out of the box solutions. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of stakeholders associated with the renters. We have a lot of stakeholders associated with the businesses, as well as the residents that live in the R2 zones. Uh, what we have not done so far is bring them together for a solution. What we have done is have a commission that thinks they have the answers and continue to just make more laws, more fines, more code enforcement. It's just not working. So what I would do is bring the people together, brainstorm, and come up with a solution. I think there's better solutions out there than what we're doing right now. Thank you, Commissioner. I mean, candidate Morton. Uh, how would you balance the interests of residents, businesses, and tourists? Well, there's a, two points to this. One thing, I could not do one thing by myself. I have to rely on my fellow commissioners as I have for, for years. Sometimes it would go a little different. We have to go back and re-look re at this thing. But I would be interested in to hear, listen to, like I've always have, listen to our citizens our business people and our relative people to get the best solutions for it. We have done a lot of meetings with our residents and our uh, and, uh, real estate people. So it, it's not like we're not listening to the people. We're, we're listening, but some people don't like what they want to hear. So that's what I have, have to say. Candidate Rash, mm -hmm. how would you balance the interests? I, I think, uh, uh, First, first of all, with all the vacation rentals, the uh, uh, companies doing the vacation renting need to let the people know that they are coming into a residential community and uh, uh, they need to uh, ed educate them, uh, to, you know, respect everybody. I think uh, the Chamber of Commerce is doing a good job of letting them know about the freckle pen and all the other things to do and uh, doing that. And then the residents, I, I think uh, uh, the residents are, are uh, adjusting to the difference than what it was 20 years ago when I bought. 
and I think that the residents are educating themselves on how to deal with some of the vacation rentals. And we're just trying to find balance. And I think in the two years I've been uh, commissioner, that we've brought the balance between the residents and the uh, uh, tourists. Okay. I think great steps. Okay, great, thanks. Uh, candidate Christensen, how would you Thank balance? you. Yep. And it is a balancing act, and it is, uh, there are three different stakeholders, like you mentioned, in our community. And it's become, it used to be primarily all residential, and we do have a significant amount of business, and now the, the visitors. Holmes Beach requires innovative thinking, forward thinking commissioners who are accountable to the residents and the city government who provides full transparency. Um, I have a strong business background, which provides me with that tool, those tools needed to be a successful leader. Uh, I understand the value of working together with the fellow residents, businesses and other elected officials to achieve favorable results for our city. And my good goal is to continue making Holmes Beach an enjoyable place to live, work, and visit for all. Okay, thank you. And uh, candidate Morton, this is sort of a follow yeah. on. How concerned are you with the dwindling permanent population in Holmes Beach? What would you do to promote, recruit, re uh, and recruit more full-time residents versus investors? Wow, that's a tough one. Because when, we, when I first got on the commission, we had a out of control commission that was all more for the rental programs and stuff. So they pretty much had people to come in and buy and sell out to other people. So that disturbed everything. Now is trying to get it in here. People say you lower taxes stuff, but you have to have a certain amount of taxes to function the city. So you got to work with it and advertise our city as a friendly city. Instead of a lot of times, people are getting the the cart before the horse, and so it's just not right if you sit there and think of one idea. So you got to really look into the community and find out what we're really doing to get it into it and get our school where it's functional for everybody here as it has been, continue to work okay. on that. And you can take this too. Time. Okay, uh, candidate Rash, uh, recruiting more full-time residents versus um, investors. And that, that uh, uh, we need to maintain the uh, unique coastal community and charm that attracted all of us back 20, 25 years ago. We must increase our uh, neighborhoods because that is the lifeblood of the community it is us, the residents. And we're losing residents left and right to either uh, uh, aging and, and moving away or uh, uh, for whatever reason. And I think it's important that we uh, work to find a balance to, to bring the residents in. I think we need to give incentives for the developers in that to build houses that are family oriented instead of resort uh, rent rental oriented. And I think if we could give, give incentives, some sort of tax incentive or something to build, build homes for uh, families instead of rental, I think that would help uh, bring more people into the island. Okay, and candidate Christensen. Yes, uh, and this is really vital to the success of Holmes Beach and really all of Anna Marie Island. We're seeing our resident population leaving over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and we lose 10 to sometimes 25% of our residential population. So I agree with Commissioner Rash that we have to stop the bleeding. This is the reason that people in rent, uh, vacation renters come here is because of our community. They want to feel a part of a community. They want to be renting in a, in a home that's in a community. So we have to stop that and um, we need to look at ways of doing that. And I think um, our quality of life for residents is the number one thing we can do on the commission is increase that quality of life and that is enforcing our um, ordinances. Uh, and somebody touched on it is we have an elementary school on this island 
60% of the children that go to that school now are from off the island. They're not even, there aren't enough families on the island anymore. And we, that's a, a big concern of mine. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, and candidate Hurst. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I think this is fairly simple. Um, the majority of people that do move here uh, visited here first. They came here, they vacationed here, they fell in love with it, they fell in love with the island, they fell in love with the people. And I think if we embrace visitors, make them feel part of the community, uh, make them feel welcome, uh, become a community ourselves. You know, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see a, a, a every Friday event. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, like one once a month Friday, first Friday of the month event. A lot of other cities have it. Imagine somebody coming to this community, seeing that kind of thing while they're visiting. They're going to say, "Wow, this isn't just a va great vacation place. This is a community. We can live here." You know, I think we got to make it enticing when they come here. And and you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You know. And some of it to me is some of our, you know, some of our enforcement, some of our phone calls like 1001 and things like that, to, you know, give people bad taste. So best thing we can do is make them feel welcome, make them love our community while they're here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna do one more question from our uh, pre-submitted questions and then we'll take a few from chat. Um, this is a long question. Um, so a uh, uh, candidate, Rash, a call for a referendum offering home speech citizens the opportunity to consider an alternative form of government was voted down by three members of the Home Speech City Commission. What, uh, what is the optimal and most effective form of government for home speech? How do we achieve that? What is your position on bringing an alternative form of government referendum before the beach citizens? I, I was uh, uh, the only commissioner that spoke to the forum back when they had that. And my uh, point of view was back then, it shouldn't be up to three or five people to decide the form of government. I think it should be put on a ballot. And I believe that today. And I'd also like to see all of our meetings start being videotaped and uh, our, that where people can come on, the community can reach in, in there and watch the meeting so they can get more educated and more interested in what's going on in the community. And I think if, if once we get people more interested in what's going on in the community via uh, video uh, live feed from the meetings, I think there'll be more people want to get interested to come in and uh, be a part of our government. And uh, again, I just think it all be put on a, a ballot and let the voters vote it. Okay, thank you. Uh, candidate, um, uh, Christensen, <laughs> sorry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this has been a question. Um, this was studied extensively for nine months by an ad hoc committee uh, a couple of years ago, appointed, they were appointed residents and they brought several different forms of the government to our commission to vote on to allow um, our resident voters to vote on it. And that was denied. Um, I believe that similar to Commissioner Rash, that the voters should decide what form of government home speech has. In fact, Home speech was founded 70 years ago with the same form of government we have today, which is you know, we need to relook at that. Is that really what's functioning properly? It should be on a referendum on the ballot and the voters should decide. Five commissioners should not decide what form of government we have in home speech. And that's my position. Okay, and candidate Hurst. Yes, um, so, so I was on the commission when that, uh, that came to us and I did, I did vote against it. Um, not, not that I did not think the voters should have a chance to vote on it. Uh, at that time, the voters are voting on a charter review board that was going to review that same issue. And our attorney at the time had recommended we not put two initiatives on the ballot that could be conflicting. And she said, you know, let the charter review do their thing. That was her recommendation. I went with that recommendation. Um, that the charter review happened. Uh, they did not recommend a new form of government. 
Uh, I personally think the topic should be brought back up and I think we should discuss it again uh, and the commission vote for it again and my, my, my opinion it would pass. Okay, Senator Morton. Okay, I was also on that commission and I agree with uh, Rick Hurst that we followed the uh, recommendations of our illegal attorney for the city. And when it came back through, it did not go through because the way people thought that the charter review was doing their thing, it wasn't presented the way it needed to be so we could do a really a viable uh, re response with uh, citizens. I think, yes, the citizens should have a choice to vote on things, make their opinions there, but a lot of, a lot of things, it just does not work that way. You got to work with everybody with five commissioners. If citizens put us there to do business for them, we, if the, if the commissioners are doing what they're supposed to be doing, they will listen to the citizens, but it, we, sometimes we have, uh, silent uh, ears and so okay. thank you, you know, everything goes that way. okay thank you and uh carolyn um if you unmute yourself i am unmuted mm -hmm. um we have no questions on chat i think everyone submitted their questions ahead of time okay so go ahead <laughs> we have plenty <laughs> not to worry okay candidate christensen how do you think, think home speech can alleviate its beach parking problems? Paid parking, a parking tower, uh, um, re, uh, keep the reduced parking or citizens stickers or Good some question. <laughs> yeah, and this has been a real hot topic, especially of mine. I live in an area that's been um, very much affected by the parking on our streets. Home Speech is a, has 3,500 3, to, to, 3, to 4,000 residents, but we see three times that amount of people that come every day. And as a matter of fact, in the 4th of July week last year, we had 234,845 cars come in and out of Home Speech. There is not enough parking for what we have on this island. We have 10,000 people moving to Manatee County every year. We have 400,000 people in our county that want to come to the beach. There's not enough parking out here. So the answer really lies with the commission, the city commission of Homes Beach, working with our neighbor cities, as well as our county. The county advertises the island to bring people here, but they're not providing pike park parking for the island visitors. And that shouldn't be on the, the backs of the residents. So I support working with our county and city uh, partners. Thank you very much. Uh, candidate Hurst. Yes, um, so I, I, I definitely support uh, bringing in more stakeholders, such as county, state, um, and just, just and other residents, you know, other residents who are not necessarily in our two zones and, and put together some ideas. I think the idea of blanketly wiping away 80% of parking and then scrambling to bring some back when residents were upset was just a, a, a wrong approach. I don't know if I have the answer. I'll throw a solution out there. Permit parking for people of all of Manatee County. And if you come into Holmes Beach and you park using your parking permit and you misbehave, you leave trash, you do whatever, your parking permits revoked for two years. We still have a problem. You know, I still see people that are parking in the businesses and, and doing that. And again, the beach people are saying, well, they're leaving trash and all that. Well, we're not enforcing them because we, we have no way they're parking in the business. Let them have a parking permit and then take it away if they don't behave. That's one of my solutions, but I think we need more people involved to come up with a good solution. Okay, thank you. Uh, candidate Martin. Well, I'd like to say that's been a very hot topic. Uh, we took a stand back when we started this to uh, adjust things. But the thing of it is, it's just not Manatee County residents. We got people coming from Pope, uh, Pinellas, uh, other, other counties coming here because we got free parking. We need to figure out some way, because we have two places where let them get away from us, where the county could have brought about the property, put parking in there. But still, the solution is not going to be 
that easy. Like Rick said, we're going to have to bring people into the situation and, and have a public forum and, and see if we can come up with the best solution. We, this is the best we can come up right now with the permit parking. And put, permit parking will work. We, we've got all kinds of parking in a way for the amount of size of this island is, but we can't bring on Manatee County. Manatee County created the problem okay. for us. Uh, okay, time's up. Okay, candidate Rash. Uh, yes, um, I, I think we we can't just keep bringing more and more cars onto the island. We got to figure out a way, and I think the best way is to have 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 off island parking, and ha have a express lane for the buses to bring people on and off the island. That that gives them an incentive to get out of their car and come in there, and, and do that. And I think at some point in time, if the state wants to keep uh advertising this they're going to have to build an express lane to bring people on and off and i think that would alleviate some of our uh traffic problems and i also think paid parking needs to uh, be coming coming in place because where can you go and park free nowhere and i think the uh, county and the city and everybody's missing out on, on income that can help us not have to raise taxes that let the uh, uh uh people coming out here to uh have the day. Okay, thank you. Uh, candidate Morton. Yes. What? What's the question? The question is, um, is... Uh, you still, you still with me. The, the, you already answered the question. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, I started New with, question. Okay, new question. Uh, then that no. would go to candidate Rash. Uh, if I started with Morton last time. No, you started with me this this last time. That's what parking. I thought. You started with me, so then I That's guess what I thought. Yeah. Uh, Morton, it, it, this is about the parking. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, Pat, yeah. Pat yeah. answered that. We okay. all answered it. You must all have. Right. You must have gone out all of right, order. All right. So start starting with candidate Hurst. <laughs> do we? Do you think yeah. that? Home speech needs a city manager. Do I think home speech needs a city manager? Um, I'm not ready to um, make that decision right now. Um, I, at one time, was very confident that, that we did not, um, you know, this this upcoming election. You know, I, I have concern with the fact that our mayor is running unopposed. You know, it, it, it's a tough job. You know, and it's a full-time job, and it doesn't pay a lot of money. And we're, you know, it's essentially dependent upon one person who wants to be mayor. And if we don't have anyone else to be mayor, we might we might have a problem. So, I, I, I'm I I changed my tune quite a bit as far as where I once was because I I did think that Judy was a, you know, a, a great mayor with her background. But we we really need to find a little bit more stability and something that's a little bit better long term. So. I am starting to lean towards that direction. I think we need to start to look into it. Okay, candidate Norton. No, I okay, think we then. can get qualified people for it, for mayor. Uh, and the cost of it is high. A lot of people don't realize that. That's it. Okay, candidate, sorry, I cut you off there. <laughs> Uh, candidate Rush. Uh, again, I think uh, uh, a city manager is not for one person to decide. I think it should be left up to the voters to decide. And uh, I can see uh, where Judy's doing some good, and I can see where uh, uh, a city manager can do good. So at this time, uh, uh, I just think it all be left up to the voters to decide what kind of form of government we live with and let the governors let the voters decide it and then live with it. And candidate Christensen. Yeah, I, I agree with Commissioner Rash. Um, most Florida cities use a professional manager that's hired and directed by the commission. We don't have that right now. We're only run by a mayor that only needs to live in the city for two years and doesn't have to have management experience and understand city regulations. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong, 
but I, I believe what Commissioner Rash and I are very much alike on this is that it should be in a referendum to the citizens to decide what form of government and if we have a city manager. Um, I believe the citizens should be allowed to decide and and again that right was denied um, last in the last commission and so I would be an advocate for allowing it to be put on the ballot and supporting the, dis the decision by the voters to make that decision if we need a city manager. Thank you. Okay, now candidate Morton. Home speech spends many valuable resources in establishing ordinance. How important is it for the police and code compliance departments to follow through <clears throat> enforcing these ordinance as city officials intended and as the code reads. Uh, there seem to also be uh, quite a bit about the noise ordinances, and I, I'm sure this refers to other things, but uh, you might keep that one specifically in mind as well in your answer. Well, okay, let's start with the noise. It's a very clear ordinance. People mis misinterpret it uh, that way it's be conducted is very clear. I think the code enforcement and the law enforcement are both are being very diligent and uh, going with our codes and our ordinances, what we have. A lot of things can't be seen by a lot of people being things being done. But the thing it is, we got the code enforcement up to where it should be and being proactive on the, all these short-term rentals, getting information out to them talking to them and people just need to call in to the city instead of calling the commissioners, calling to the city and report the situations as they should be reported and then it'll be taken care of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, candidate Rash. I, uh, when I ran for uh, uh, commission first time, the quality of life was uh, uh, my number one priority being a, a voice uh, on it. And because there was a lot of uh, uh, turning the head of the noise and this and that. But in the last two years, I've reached out to the commission and the mayor and the chief, and we've come up to uh, 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 negotiate our, uh, that where uh, we do have a better quality of life now with the noise. The code has stepped up. We got better staff. They've educated the, uh, the uh, vacation rental people, but still more has to be done because they're, they, we have a dec decibel reading of uh, 65 and any noise over 65 sh should be uh, uh, cited and not just uh, uh, given a warning ticket. I'm the only uh, uh, commissioner that really has party houses around it, so I understand. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, candidate Christensen. Well, I have a lot of party houses, Kim. But you're not I a commissioner have... yet. Correct. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I do have a lot of party houses around me. I have six pools in my back and I'm in a fishbowl and that was not there 12 years ago. So, you know, um, I believe in that the code enforcement and code compliance and our police officers are doing a better job, but I know that um, we need to see, seek a better balance. I don't think the quality of life is where it needs to be for our residents. Um, I believe that we have ordinances in place that are strong, but I don't think they're being enforced to the best ability they can be enforced. I think there's um, a lot of passes that go on, getting into compliance. Get, and, when, and when code and code compliance visits a property five times, and they're still the same um, violations, they need to escalate. And that's what I mean by um, enforcing the ordinances as they're written. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, candidate Hurst. Yeah, um, so, so I, I, I think they're being enforced except their hands are tied. And the ordinance itself does have certain measurables attached to it. Uh, and if you don't meet those measurables, uh, it won't hold up in court. And the police and code enforcement are not going to write tickets that do not hold it up in court. I think the problem is the approach. You know, I always say, you know, the, the best approach to 
create a good behavior is not punishment. It's positive reinforcement. It's education. It's awareness. All right. We keep we keep trying to punish. And then when it doesn't work, we try to punish some more. And if it don't work, we punish some more. And we add more in code enforcement. We never we never take a positive approach. We we did try one and it works where code enforcement went out and met with the people who were checking in. But that's not scalable. You can't meet with every resident. You know, they pick eight, nine, ten properties. It's a great idea. Let people welcome to the community, let them know their community at work. Okay. We need to figure out how through technology to do that more. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So um, onto the a very similar question. Um, is it, and we're starting now with candidate Raj. Uh, is it important that the city follow the comprehensive plan and codes in order to retain residents or is it all right to quote let the residents move? Hmm. Let me unmute and say, I, I'm a firm believer that we need residents for the lifeblood of our city. The more residents we have, the stronger our city is. And I've been a very advocate for the last eight years on trying to bring a balance to the uh, uh, city. You know, a few years back when I wasn't on the commission, I heard they was gonna have noise and I was out of town and I flew in and I had 43 people at the meeting that, that had problems. And they spoke their word and I think that was the beginning of uh, bringing the noise violations in, in the uh, check a little bit. But I still think we need to bring them in just a little bit more, but it has gotten better under under the last two years. And uh, I just we just gotta have the residents when they gotta be able to live in their own houses. Okay. Um, Carolyn, do we have any questions in chat? You're on mute. Wait, aren't you going to ask that question to other people? Right. Did you go through everybody? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Uh, oh, I don't have any questions. <laughs> uh, is it important to, for the city to follow uh, the comprehensive plan and codes in order to retain residents or just let them move out? Candidate Christensen. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't start my minute until I start, please, because I didn't hear her call my name. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really important to follow our LDC, our Land Development Code, our, our codes and um, that are written by the commission. As a matter of fact, today at, or yesterday, I brought um, a situation up to code enforcement, the police chief and the commissioners about a property that is has a 30 day minimum rental. And this one is not following the code, and yet our, our uh, enforcement officers are not, are not our, our attorney is, they're too sometimes afraid to push the envelope, to push because they're afraid of being sued. And we can't be afraid. We need to stand by our codes. They're strong enough. The wording is there. And if we find loopholes, let's close them. This 30-day rental property, because they're going to donate it for an auction, for a three day stay, our attorney says that's okay. Somebody's making money. Somebody's paying to stay at this property and yet they're not gonna pay the 5% bed tax and they're in a neighborhood and they're violating our codes. That's a clear violation, but it's nothing's being done. And that's what I'm against. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, candidate Hurst. Yeah, it's a kind of an odd question because we're actually not talking about the LDC, we're talking about the comprehensive plan. Comprehen comprehensive plan is in the process of being uh, rewritten. But the comprehensive plan, any, any ordinance that the uh, commission puts forth is reviewed by the planning commission. And what the planning commission's job is to make sure that the ordinance does not violate the comprehensive plan. So to say that we're violating the comprehensive plan is saying the planning commission is not doing their job. I don't think that's true. So I think it's a strange question and would have to know an example of what they're talking about. Cause I, I think the Comm planning commission does a really good job of making sure all policy follows a comprehensive plan. Thank you. And candidate Morton. 
Okay. Uh, with the words that I agree exactly with what Rick Hurst is saying there, it's it's not code enforcement. We got to follow the law. I mean, yes, the laws are written for reasons to protect us from messing things up and getting a lawsuit. You know how law suitable these people are out here anymore. The minute you do something that they do not like, they want to sue you. There's a couple of companies out here that just loves that. But so we can't spend money protect uh, going against something that we can work through with code enforcement and attorneys visiting with this same property that uh, candidate Christian is talking about. We just can't just up and just dump it. We got to take and take it down through its course because if you don't take it through its course, it's going there. We have a lot of stringent rules to follow. We got to follow them as we're supposed to, so we don't get a lawsuit. We're not afraid to be in a lawsuit. Look at the Bird Harris Act we've been going thank, against. Thank you very much. Okay, um, now Carolyn, do we have any questions in chat? No. Okay, we will move on. Uh, candidate Christensen. All citizens are concerned with management of their personal budgets. What are your thoughts of budget management at home speech? Are there any changes in expenditure priorities you would like to see? Thank you, yes. Um, in this regard to the city budget, they just went over and I attend all the city commission meetings which are being done by Zoom now. So I have been kept keeping up with the budget, especially over the last couple of years. Home speech has a budget of $17.9 million for a mile and a half island city uh, with 3,500 residents that, that, are, that live here full time. That's, that's really high. Um, you know, I, I think that we provide additional police, we provide additional code enforcement beyond what a normal city of this size does. And that's because we have all the vacation rentals and all the day visitors coming. So is that, should that be on the taxpayers uh, budget? It shouldn't. We should be working with our county partners, our other cities, because we're having to police for 40,000 people that live here, that are visiting here. And we're only a city of 3,500 or 4,000. So we definitely have a budget issue and home speech was not made or set up to manage and maintain tens of thousands of people every day. We can't do it. So we need help. Thank you. Uh, candidate Hurst. Yes. Um, so, so when I look at the budget and I look at what, you know, the things we can control, uh, we, some, some of that 17 million are reserves. Um, projects, uh, infrastructure projects, re resiliency, stormwater. I look at the operational budget, all right? And our operational budget for this year is going to be $8.9 million. I think what we need to attack is the operational budget. I've been a process review consultant for the last few years, and I can walk into any business and cut their cost by 10% easily with low hanging fruit. That's never been done in our departments. I think somebody needs to go in there, look at every department. Why do you do this? Why do you do this? Why do you do this? Why do you have so many people? Ask those questions, get answers, and shed the waste. That's the only way we're going to cut the budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, candidate Morton. Well, I may can I disagree with uh, Christensen because of the size of the city we have here. We have to have a certain amount of personnel to do different jobs to go out because you know the rental program is is a big the biggest thing we have out here and so if we don't have the personnel to go out and do these things we got to do that we got to bring the personnel in they're bringing the personnel in here because we're not just looking at a city of 27,000 or 3,000 we're looking at a city that every day it comes up to 20, about 15,000 people or more and given days it'll go up to 80,000 so we have to have all these personnel to take care of the situations that the where visitors are presenting to us and the budget's been very scrutinized by everybody we went over it this year it was one of the better budgets because we cut back on a lot of the stuff that, we, that they wanted they dropped, dropped a lot of the wish stuff we went back to just what we had to have to operate the city 
Okay, thank you. Candidate Rush. The uh, budget, when they started talking about it, they wanted to raise the millage rate. And I was a firm opponent against raising the uh, millage rate. I told the uh, uh, staff and or the mayor that we need to go back and look and cut. And they did go back and, and cut in that. And our, our police department, I'm not gonna beat on them or nothing, but they got $3.4 million budget. And I think that our bed tax that uh, uh, goes to Manatee County ought to be coming back here to help with that $3.4 million as, as far as funding. You know, they give us very, very little money to uh, police the beaches or anything else and to watch all the people coming in. And I just think we need to be getting getting our fair share of the uh, money that leaves Holmes Beach. I need to I think it needs to be brought back to us. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, mm -hmm. this is for starts with candidate Hurst. Uh, very appropriate follow on. Do you think that the number of police in Holmes Beach is necessary? Are they serving the residents appropriately? What are you trying to get me a speeding ticket? <laughs> Most people, many people are afraid to ask, answer that question. Um, so it, it, it's suspect, yes. I mean, you, you drive up and down Holmes Beach and it's hard not to see officers sitting on the side of the road, you know, trying to trying to find trouble and, you know, things like that. And uh, we do have a lot of residents. I mean, we do have a lot of visitors and, you know, and, and they need to be policed and all that. But uh, the number 17 does seem like a lot. I've done some math on shifts and hours and things like that. It, it does seem excessive. On the flip side, you know, we're kept safe and, you know, so it's a balance, you know. Is it worth spending a little extra to be safe or is it way too much? And I, I think someone needs to ask the question and answer the question. So I'm not gonna answer the question, but I think somebody needs to answer the question and provide us with some you know, proof that we need all these people. And that's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, candidate Morton. Yes. the. Amount of officers we have, we have 17. That's including the chief, the detective, and them two. We only have 14 road officers. We have three per shift. We have a sergeant and two officers, patrol officers. We need this kind of a patrolman. People about this thing. Why do we everywhere we see an officer somewhere? It is something to see an officer where because when you have somebody out there, people will see it. The, the crime has went down because they know there's going to be somebody around not too far around long before they something happens. So to keep our residents safe, yes, we do this because, like I again and again, we our amount of citizens are stays the same, but our visitors are constant there. We have a lot of bad characters coming here. They've been picked up through the uh, system we have. So these people come here with bad intentions to do things. So if you have these people, officers out there to see what's going on and over the radar or whatever it needs to be taken care of, okay, they do Tom. their job. It's very really appropriate. Uh, I'm 39. Um, okay. Um, and that would be a candidate. I'm sorry. <laughs> Want me to answer that one? Because I haven't right. had that question. Yeah, that that, that Kenneth Christensen. Thank was you. Something in chat. That... <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I mean the the number of officers we have to um, to the point made by several is because of the day trippers we have because of all the vacation rentals. When you had a home that had two people in it, they demolished it. They put up two homes that have. Uh, eight bedrooms each side, you've got 40 people where there used to be two people. So we have a whole lot more people here. Um, I'd rather, I'd really like to see improvement in our outreach program by our police officers. I don't know a single officer other than the chief, and I've been here for a long time. Um, I'd like yeah. to see them do some 
uh, serving and protecting rather than writing um, parking tickets. Do you know that every year our police write over a thousand parking tickets? Now, what I'm saying is people need to be educated. If they're parking in the wrong spots, let's educate them. We shouldn't be writing more tickets and the police should be serving and protecting. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. With candidate Morton. Should the Manatee Avenue bridge be replaced when and what type of bridge would you promote? Well, wow, that's been a one for 15, 20 years. I, I don't like to draw bridge because I've seen it break down too much. Or if there's a traffic accident on it, it shuts down the whole, whole Manatee Avenue and they have to reroute. So I'd say I, wouldn't, I would like to see a fixed span bridge we don't need to go with a 65 footer like a lot of people wants to do. That's that's a craziness. But we could we could go with a 35 foot as some people are suggesting to do, make it where the traffic flow won't be hung up by the opening it and closing to the boats all the time. But you know, I need to put it up to the voters and have them to say what they want. Candidate Rash. That's it. Can it write a bridge? Should it be uh, replaced? Am I, still, am I on now? Yeah, you're on. All right. I didn't get to answer the last question, by the way. Can I answer it first about the police? Oh, you didn't. No, you didn't. Oh, okay. Answer the police first, then go back to the bridge. All right. I think uh, uh, we have a pretty good number of police. I would just like to see them uh, uh, directed a little differently and uh, I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, we got the new license plate reader that has helped a lot, but I've seen where the uh, officers uh, uh, sit up there a lot. And I think the officers ought to be making more daily trips around all the streets here in our community to make them feel safer. And I, uh, one of my pet things that I'd like to see during the busy season, I'd like to see our officers directing traffic off the island so we wouldn't be backed up all the way to uh, 73rd Street getting off the island. And I think if we had, had our police doing the uh, uh, traffic to direct and at the lights that we could get people off and, and not be such a gridlock out here. Thank you. Now, candidate Rash. Okay. How do you feel about replacing the Manatee Bridge and what type uh, uh, and when would you promote? I think I think we need a, 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 a bridge that will uh, quit uh, having the drawbridge goes up to make the traffic uh, uh, back up so much. And I think we need to build a, a bridge that will fit in with the character of the island, whether it's uh, here, here in Holmes Beach or whether it's up there in Bradenton Beach. I think it needs to be the smaller bridge to uh, fit into the character of the island. Okay, candidate Christensen. The bridge. Yeah, the bridge, um, I think is up to the people. I don't really have skin in the game on that one, but I do believe what Kim Rash is saying that it should have the character of the island. So if that's small or, or a little taller, you know, I'm, I'd rather just look at all the options and, and leave that open. Um, but one of the things I did want to bring up was the tourism development tax that, uh, that was sort of alluded to on one of the previous questions. And just so that the viewers know too that home speech or actually Anna Maria Island um, is contributes 53% of the monthly 5% um, bed tax to Manatee County that equals $864,000 every month that it comes from Anna Maria Island. 55% of that money comes from home speech alone. So that tells you how much visitors we have, how many short term rentals we have and only 20% of it's coming back in the form of beach renourishment every five years. So again, for the police to, to be able to be funded by the county would be helpful from Thank some you. of that funding. Okay, hmm. the bridge, candidate Harps. Yes, <clears throat> well, somebody's gotta stick up for our little drawbridge. So, you know, I, I, I kinda <laughs> like what we have, um, although I, I don't think that the world's going to let us keep it. Uh, so it would be my vote to have the 
shortest bridge possible that fits in with our community and our environment as we could. You know, um, the I hate to draw a bridge when I get stuck behind it, but when I do, I remind myself that I live in paradise and I must exercise patience and tolerance to live here. So um, okay. it is not so bad and it is better than other alternatives. And I, I do think it's got a lot of character and charm to it. Okay, we're coming to the end. So we will give each candidate uh, a minute to summarize uh, their pitch and uh, we will keep the same rotation. So we will start with candidate Ratch. I, I feel that my first term that I had was pretty successful. And the re reason that is, I think we have a better quality of life since I've been elected. I was a strong uh, advocate against raising the uh, property taxes. And so we didn't have our millage rate uh, done. I, I led the fight against the uh, raising of the uh, stormwater uh, tax uh, 300%. We we had it out and then uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Schaefer brought it back and we negotiated down 50% of what it was. Uh, I found that uh, they, they were single sourced and stuff on the uh, on the bids. I encouraged them to go out and get other bids. I helped help design the tot lock fencing and I installed it for them. And I was the voice for the residents for the last two years. And that's why they wanted me to come back and run again. Thank you very much, candidate Rash. Candidate Christensen. Thank you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for having this forum. I really appreciate it. I am pro-resident. I am not anti-visitors. I am for controlled growth in home speech. I want to see balance between residents and rentals. I believe Anna Maria Island and home speech has a special culture and character driven by having full-time resident neighborhoods. And as a commissioner, I will do everything I can to protect this. I will be an advocate to improve enforcement of our noise ordinance and close the loopholes in the vacation rental ordinances. With my extensive business experience, I will require better communication, collaboration, and transparency from city officials to our community. I'll respond to emails and be visible in our community. Uh, I will attend, I have been attending commission meetings. I have been a planning commissioner and I volunteer at the city committees and if elected, I'll be able uh, to be effective immediately because of my involvement. I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd, vote, vote for Jane Christensen for City Commissioner for Home Speech. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, candidate Hurst. Uh, yes, first I'd like to uh, thank the League of Women Voters for holding this event and for those that are uh, patiently listening to this. Um, I just want to say that, you know, the status quo is not always the right thing. And I think we're getting too much of the uh, status quo. Uh, I think we're getting a lot of candidates that are coming from a similar inner circle. And I think there's a lot of, you know, common ideas and it just, it just keeps continuing, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I really, uh, I, I do want to run. I think we need a, we need a different perspective. You know, I'm not against regulation. I'm not uh, against the knowing that the visitors need to behave. I just think the approach is, is you know, not, the, the approach we're taking is just not working, right? Uh, I, I did develop what I think is a roadmap for a stronger home beach. And, you know, I, I think we need to validate our resiliency plans. Uh, I think we have a lot of eggs in one basket. Uh, we got to challenge the budget, as I said earlier. We got to take a review of process of, of each department. Uh, we got to bring in additional stakeholders and how to manage visitors. First. Candidate Morton. Okay, I'd like to first thank you, the League of uh, Women's Voters, for having this tonight. Uh, I've been always been a firm believer of listening to what the citizens have to say. Sometimes I don't care much for it, but it's not my thing to just say that. They, they don't have the right. They have the right to admit, bring up anything they want to, bring it up and how they want to present it. It might not be the way we would want it to do, but I've always been here to listen to the city. I've worked on many, many ordinances to get things like the noise ordinance to get a lot better quality of life in here than what we had in the last probably nine years or more. 
the people always ask me to continue to run because they say I, I'm, I am a voice for them. I have been. I have no agenda since I've been on this uh, commission. I know a lot of people come in with the agendas and they're keeping quiet until they get on and then they will get their little group together and they make things work the way they want it to work. I, I cannot see that. I think we should all take a hat and put it where it belongs okay. for the city the citizens of the in there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Jane Christensen, to Richard Hurst, to Pat Morton, and Kim Rash. Uh, this has been uh, a, a real uh, substantive forum and you have a very invested audience. I will tell you that I didn't get to eight questions. So, so. Thank uh, you. Okay. It's been great. Thanks to the other participants too. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Good luck everybody.